Welcome back, one all the more, Trails in the Sky 3rd. Last time we left off, we had, well, gotten the last healing stone, that's right. Our last party character, and because of who we saw when we was around the healing stone, it's fairly obvious who's going to be inside. Because we're using the ceiling stone, the barrier that blocked our path, and the umbral labyrinth. Oh god damn, I killed you! The game will load it. Of course the game the game skipped the freaking barrier breaking. Yeah, barrier's broken. And it's Renee! I can't believe it. It really is Renee. It looks like she's fast asleep. Papa, Mama, why? Renee. This cutscene feels like it's gonna be a long one, people. Strap on. Where am I? Oh, this is just a dream. Renee. Estelle? Joshua and Tita too? <laughs> what a nice dream this is. Renee! Oh? Yep. Oh silly Estelle, you're supposed to be older than me. You shouldn't be acting like a clingy child. You're so warm though, and you smell so nice. It's almost like this isn't a dream at all. What's going on? Renee, this? What are you doing here? No, never mind that. What am I doing here? It's okay, Renee. I'm going to explain now, so try to stay calm, okay? You see, we're, we're. Don't come any closer! If you take another step towards me, I will kill you! Just try. Just try and handle this, Estelle. Do mind taking a step. Do you mind taking a step back? Okay. I'm happy to see you again, Renee. How have you been all this time? How is that any of your business? You're just as bad as Estelle is, Joshua. Why won't you two leave me alone and stop following me around? If the game needs to load, I figure you must have you might you must have noticed. You're right. For the past few months, we've been traveling around trying to find you. We're in Crossbell at the moment too. Are you get Are we getting warmer? You're in Crossbell. Why do you want to find me so much? We just want that. We just want a chance to talk with you. We heard from a reliable source that you haven't gone, haven't been back to Ouroboros since we last fought. Is that true? What's that got to do with either of you? All I want is is to be left alone. I don't want to talk to either of you. I don't even want to see you. So why won't you just leave me? Just leave me be. <laughs> because, sorry, Renee. This one's on me. Ever since you flew off, I haven't been able to get you off my mind. I've been getting Joshua to look into where you might be, and we've been going around chasing down every possible lead. But that's why I'm so happy to finally be able to see you again like this. But... Oh, I get it now. You're lying, aren't you, really? All of that's just a cover for the fact you're trying to capture me. What? Sorry to disappoint you, but I only know about as much as Joshua does about Ouroboros. Even if you catch me, you're, you're not going to get anything useful out of me. And even if I did know lots of dirty secrets, I wouldn't tell you. I bet you feel really stupid for wasting your time now. Wait a second, that's not... Or are you going to try... Or are you going to try your luck anyway? You sure bought a lot of familiar faces for backup. Even I might have trouble taking on this many people at once. We have a boss fight against her right now. But I'm confident I'll leave at least a few of you headless before I end up beaten. Gave me some load. Renee? You gotta be kidding me. 
What are we supposed to do, Scara? Don't ask me, this just doesn't look good. Well, I think I know who you are now. Orberos Enforcer number 15, the Angel of Slaughter, correct? You certainly do know me, but I don't know you, though. Are you a knight of the church? Yes, I am Rius Argent, a squire. And while I may not be very familiar with your circumstances, would it hurt you to behave less like a self-centered child? Excuse me? Did you call me a self-centered child? From what I heard, your intelligence and deductive reasoning have few peers. That led that led you to that led you to join the Ouroboros, obtaining the current rank and abilities you now have. So unless I'm wrong, I find it very hard to believe you haven't already figured out that this isn't a trap we've set to capture you. And yet, you still expect us to waste our time and humor your little temper tantrum? So yes, I did call you a self-centered child. <laughs> I love you, woman. Damn, she sure doesn't mince words. My, you're a brave one, aren't you, miss? Did I hear a lovely squire... Did I hear... Did I hear a lovely squire like you trying to provoke an enforcer like me? You must really want to end up sl splattered all over the floor. I can say the same to you. I have no idea why everyone else here regards you favorably, but I, for one, have no interest in being friends with someone from Ouroboros. So if a battle is what you want, I will be more than happy to oblige. Oh no, Riz, a Templar sword, huh? Those can certainly be a rude awakening in the right hands. Of course, everyone else who's ever tried to challenge me with one ended up quite predictable after a while. Before long, they were all begging for mercy like pigs about to be slaughtered. It was ever so pitiful. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you do the same. Renee? No? Do you actually want to fight, or do you only intend to stand around trying to sound threatening? I suppose this is enough talking. Ugh. Come on, you two. Both of you stop it. <laughs> hey, wait a sec. Why are the two of you so desperate to try and fight when you know you don't really want to? Renee, you were trying to make it sound like you don't care about Cell and Joshua, but deep down you're happy to see them again, and you know it. And Rias, you're actually you act, you already realize that Renee's not actually a bad person. It doesn't matter that she's with from Ouroboros. Great, the sound skipping again. Which means the game skipping again. Well, I'm happy. Then why do you look so? Why did you look so happy when Estelle hugged you? Right up until the moment you realized this was real, you were acting like it was the best dream you'd ever had. And now you're saying you don't want to talk to them, that you don't want to see them. Hold on a minute, Tita. And that's not true at all. That's not true at all. <laughs> so just admit it. <laughs> Sweetie, I swear. She just cut my life short about 10 years. What the hell was she thinking? Look at you, honestly. Yeah, my murder boner's gone. I thought you were a year older than me, you know. And yet, here you are, crying away. You're not setting a very good example. I can't help it. What am I supposed to do when you guys finally see each other again and all you do is end up fighting? That's just too sad. The sound skipping and ruining the moment! Hey, what are you crying for? Why did you have to? <laughs> you know the answer to that already, Renee. It's because she likes you. She does? Hey, Renee, you know we've been, we've still got our differences, but how about we pull all that aside and call a truce for now? A truce? As I'm sure you can tell, we're in the middle of a really messy situation right now. And honestly, you got he. You got here, mostly however you got here, you ended up being dragged right into it with us. I say it's all in the, our best interest to work together, at least until we get out of here anyway. What do you say? I'm certainly, there, that's certainly true. There's still plenty we don't know about our predicament. Having someone with your intelligence on our side may well help us fill in the remaining blanks. In fact, I would really welcome your assistance. Stupid skipping soundtrack! Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with the Colonel. I'm not a Colonel, Estelle. Regardless, I think it would be I think it would be in your best interest to work with us too. Cooperating will allow you to gather information more efficiently, as well as make it easier for you to ensure your own safety. That's true. That's obvious that wherever we are, it's somewhere abnormal. So it goes without saying that having me around would be a big help to all of you. Alright, out of respect for Tita's bravery, I'll spare you all this time. Fill me in on exactly what's going on here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. Just so we're clear, I haven't decided whether I'm going to work with you or not yet. All I'm promising is to listen to your explanation of what's happening. Then I'll decide if I'll help. I see. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on now. Whoever chose this place's name couldn't have picked a better one, couldn't they? What? You figured out something that, that we hadn't? Possibly, I'm still not completely certain yet, but I'm relatively confident in my theory after hearing a colonel's story though. Me? My experience was the same as everyone else's, ending up here after being surrounded by a sudden white light. But you say you weren't wearing a uniform when it happened to you, happened to you right colonel? How many times must I... well, whatever. I wasn't. As I explained to everyone when I first arrived, I was wearing a shirt and slacks, as I do every day at every other day, every other day at work. Stupid game, you stop skipping! Okay, run the game's not stupid. It's really the fault of the poor port, right? So then I'll tell you something. Would you say you have quite a strong emotional attachment to that uniform? Pardon? <laughs> oh, that's just a de no, that's a definite yes. It's a symbol of your past, the past you just can't quite move on from, even though you need to. Am I right? Yes, you are. Richard? It's no surprise you feel that way from your from my perspective. And lo and behold, the moment you appeared in this world, you were wearing that very same uniform again. Whatever do you think that could mean? It will mean when I arrived here, my attachment to the past ended up being manifested as reality. In other words, this world is capable of changing based on people's thoughts. Bro. Oh. <laughs> now it makes sense. Not to me it doesn't. Can you explain in slightly less complicated terms for the rest of us? It's actually real, a really simple thing. You remember how Luciola used the gospel to make you experience a dream, right? Right? The dreams we saw were different depending on what we wanted to see too. Of course, unlike that, this isn't a dream, but the concept is basic but the concept is basically the same. Anyway, just like in Luciola's dream worlds, this world changes depending on what the people inside it want. It also happens to re recreate places that exist in their memories too. It all falls into place nicely upon you simp nicely once you simplify it, doesn't it? Goddamn game, stop skipping. So it does. It explains the monuments we've encountered and how the doors work too. Still, while that explains the well, spaceship may explain the contents of this world, I find it hard to believe that any of us would desire the predicament we found ourselves in. Though I don't disagree. We're not the only ones here though, are we? Oh. So in other words, many, many of the contents of this world exist because of us, but its overall structure is also is a result is a result of someone else within it. <laughs> From what I from what I can gather, yes. What exactly is making all this possible is the part I'm still puzzling over. Making people's wishes reality was the purpose of the Ariel, but now that's been lost, and I can't think of anything else cap capable of doing the same. I think it's easy for easy for all of us to point a finger at who wished for this world to behave that the way it does, at the very least.
the Lord of Phantasma. Exactly. Based on every that's on everything that's been said, they weren't in this world originally. That was just a ghost that was just a ghost you've encountered. Until the Lord of Phantasma, she simply watched over this place from this garden here. But when they showed up, stole her power, and started remaking the world current to their own whims, the result is what we're stuck in right now. Well, what do you think? Wow. Damn, feels like you just popped your head in and solved all the crazy mysteries like they were nothing. That's certainly impressive. Even if I hadn't been able to deduce quite that much. You really are a genius, Renee. I'm sure you could have worked this out, worked worked this much out if you'd put your mind to it, Joshua. Unless Estelle's stupidity is actually contagious and rubbed off on you. Damn, crass as fuck. <laughs> Well, that's not very nice. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. <laughs> For dearie me. Either way, it sounds like this Lord of Phantasma person likes games just as much as I do. And without me, I don't know if you'll be able to beat them, so I suppose I'd better lend you a hand. <laughs> I hope you're all very grateful. Uh, yeah, sure. It's nice to have a cutie like you on board, Renee. Well, now that's settled. It's time to use that cube to take us back to the fifth plane so we can move on. Now that we've gotten close to working out what's going on, we should be able to move on to the next part of the game board now. I'm guessing your opponent's ready to make their next move, too. Uh, someone's confident. Still, have it your way. It's not as though we have any option other than to press on. I'm expecting we'll encounter a devil at the end of this plane, just like we have in all the others. We should only move on when we're sure we can handle it. Aw, I could really do without the extra couple. Then again, I am kind of curious what these devils are like in reality. Would you like to come and have a look look with me, Tina? I'm not sure. Just the two of us going would be such a bad, such a good idea. Uh, she was so opposed to being with us earlier, but look at her now. Yeah, I'm really glad she came around. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk to her while we're in here, too. Yeah. Okay, now let's check out stats. Renee's officially the last party character, and she's comparable to Richard, honestly. Well, not now, because Richard got a boost. But she's more, honestly, she's more comparable to Chloe in terms of the magic department. She has a really strong magic stat. Let's put her in the party. And as she stated, she has low stamina, but incredible arts not limited by lines. And we're back with Team Amazonus, which just check out her ornaments. Yeah, she's she has a pretty good stat. She's pretty good on the arts front. Well, she has a death, she has death element attached. Damn, girl, you going hardcore? Well. Uh, yeah, the game is right. She's pretty good stat. She already has a decent spread on her already. But let's mess with her slots. Oh wait, she already has max slots too. Damn. Didn't have to do anything to her slots. How much is her H? How much is her MP stat again? Okay. Yeah, she's really good at magic. She's like a little bit less than Chloe. Yeah, she's a little bit less than Chloe in terms of the magic department, which is honestly pretty good, but that low, basically she's comparable to Tita in her own little way. Let's check her S break. So, mid range attacks, cut through enemy ranks, taking lives, has a 50% KO chance. Okay, that's pretty good too. Uh, so yeah, she's another squishy mage character, which considering the fact that I set my party up to have like two attackers right now and two squishy mages, I think that's a pretty good setup right now. So, we're gonna end today's episode here. I'll see all of you guys back here next time. Till then everybody.